You can stand for the word of God. Turn with me to Philippians, the fourth chapter. And the fourth verse. Philippians 4.4. 4. Thank you, musicians. I know your job wasn't that difficult this morning. Praise God. Y'all still get the same pay in there. Awesome. I love the Lord. Be easy this morning. Be easy. Praise God. Philippians 4.4. 4. I do honor God. I honor our overseer in his absence. I so miss my husband. I do. He can be gone for a second. It's different. I miss him. Praise God. He and Dejanay departed uh, for the airport at the same time. Their planes took off at the same time. I said, good God Almighty, my family is split in three states. In Atlanta, Ohio. Praise God in New York right now. Later on, Pennsylvania. But I so thank God. I stayed home. Praise God, because mommy duty calls. Praise God, Junior starts school tomorrow, our seventh grade. Yeah. And I'm never disappointed, praise God, to be on mommy duty. Praise God. Last year this time, if y'all remember when Dejan came home, I went back with her. Yeah. She was starting back the semester to take her mature. So this year I'm with him. Praise God. God is so good and worthy of the praise. Philippians 4.4, 4, here begins the reading of God's holy word. Scripture reads, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. So far scripture. Amen. You may sit down. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice getting to it. Praise God. Let me just tell you some of my joy this week was spending time with my family. Of course, y'all know, y'all look up afflictions in the dictionary and you'll see my picture there just smiling. Praise God, because I walk out of one and into another and no matter how much I declare, it's not so. It happens and I have learned how to just walk through. Praise God. As much as we tell you, we don't tell you everything. Praise God. This is my portion, and God has given me grace to go through it. But I was happy to be able to spend time with my daughter, my son, and my husband this week. It was so wonderful, and it's almost like God slowed time up. And we all said the same thing just so we could enjoy being together. Because the last time she was really home in Pennsylvania was in December. She came for my birthday service, but it was like for a day, and then she went straight back. Praise God. And we got a chance to spend some time together. And we did a couple of things we wanted to do together. And Dejanay Jr. and I cooked together. Made some lasagna for them. Praise God. I didn't eat that. But made some lasagna for them. And it was good. I took a tiny little piece because I couldn't eat it. You know, the noodle and whatever. And it was, it was really, really good. And it was just really such a joy to spend time with family. And how often do we take time out to really experience in our goings and comings, I thought about, do we breathe and actually enjoy the moments we're in? I don't do it often. It's something I'm trying to get better at as I get older. I'm trying to get wiser, trying to enjoy the moments. Because I found out that they go by quick. I was just 18. OK. I, I'm just, I'm just saying. I really was. I was just 18, and and I was just like getting married. I, I just had Dejanae. I, I sneezed, and I was having Junior, and like, I, it's like time. And how did I get married? Be married for over 24 years. It just went by so quick. Like just yesterday, my mom was alive. Time go by so quick. And I'm so excited, because in studying for this message, it looked like God just wanted to, me to experience Amen. what I was about to give. And I got a chance to really, and Dejanae kept coming in, and she kind of was feeling me out, because I wasn't feeling well in my body at all. I was supposed to go to a banquet on Monday night. We were supposed to come back to Brooklyn, and I could not go. Wisdom said, don't even try. Stay home with your family. And, I was trying not to let the kids know how ill I was. You know, overseeing knew 
And so we kept moving. I was moving slow though, and I would just smile. I was extremely quiet at times. And Dejanae, so she's, you know, she, and they kind of looking because they know my temperament usually. And she kept coming, praise God. And then when she, then she did leave, and I got a chance to speak to her on the phone. I told her, I said, yeah, I was, I was more ill than I wanted to let on because I didn't want y'all to worry. She said, I knew you was moving slower. I knew you weren't saying much. I said, but I was so glad that you were home and we were all together. So don't think that mom was ignoring you. Just being around them, they were all laughing and just sitting there. And it made me appreciate God. Because yes. I remember my mom was sitting and she would get real quiet when she could talk. They didn't say much. But because she was sick and she knew time was shorter, she would just enjoy the family being around her, hoping nobody was arguing and stuff and just happy with laughs and stuff. I don't know if anybody know what I'm talking about. Some of the older folk in here who and you And that came over me. As young as I am, because I was so ill again, and so much was going on with my body that I can't even and won't even articulate this morning because we about to talk about some joy. I was sitting there just enjoying the time I had with my family. So I will have no regrets ever. I put, yeah, I put church stuff to the side. Yeah, I, I, at first I was going to start and talking about stuff that needed. And every time I thought about going into it, my husband was like, mm, we ain't talking about church stuff. We enjoyed. He knew how ill I was. My sister didn't know. My kids didn't know. Nobody knew. We don't tell a family when I get real ill. Family don't even really be knowing what's going on with me and what's in my body. But he knew how ill I was. And just taking different medications to treat different symptoms. And sitting there, and I was like, wow, I got a family. Like this little girl from the projects, God gave me people who really love me. And I was so grateful. Like really grateful. And, 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 and we were home. God gave us a home. And you know, um, people give it, oh, I gotta get to your mansion. I never told nobody we had a mansion. I said it was bigger than what we had before. Twice. But I didn't never say it was a mansion. I said it was it was my home. It was what I appreciate. I'm mortgage free. I'm, I'm so grateful in that home that my husband has fixed up so wonderfully. And I was sitting there like, this is what life and joy is about. I'm helping somebody. I ain't keeping you all morning, but I'm helping somebody. And so I was so grateful to God that he allowed me to feel joy that I had not felt in a very long time. And he slowed time up. And I know he slowed time up. I know he did, because myself, my husband, and my daughter all said the same thing. It was like, oh, I was feeling like, it's like, time went by so slow. Usually it go by so quick. And it wasn't a drag. It was just like, it was taking this time so we could enjoy every little moment. And it was just wonderful. And so I'm grateful. This will be a time that I'll look back on, praise God, when I'm having a hard time and going through and say, but God gave me joy. Yeah. I said all of that to say rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Considering what the man of God, the servant of God, the Apostle Paul, was going through at the time that he wrote this, considering that he was looking at becoming a martyr, dying for Christ, considering that he had already been through so much beating and bruised and through broken pieces and trying to make it back and all this stuff, his life was just not comfortable at all. Considering all that, for him to tell someone else to rejoice in the Lord always at this point, and then repeat it, and, and again I say rejoice because he had talked about joy so much in his letters that this is about the third time he almost starts a conversation with them, leave it off, start talking about other self, and then later on, chapters later, come back to rejoicing again, and then leave it off, and then come back again and say, rejoice in the Lord always. And it's almost like they were having a conversation with one another. They said, well, you already told us that a couple of times, to rejoice in the Lord. Why are you telling us again? And he came back and was like, again, I say rejoice. Because it was so important, and in any basic dictionary tells you that joy is a feeling of euphoria. It's a feeling that makes you feel good because of what's going on around you, because of happenings. Right. 
And so your body feel good, your emotions feel good, any basic dictionary. But the joy that Paul was talking about is Christian joy. I challenge you to command yourself to pay attention this morning. Because I'm not screaming or yelling, but I promise you, if you take this in, you are going to be changed. Somebody put up, if you're not challenged, you can't be changed. I miss that. If you are not challenged, you can't be changed. The only one who doesn't have to change is God. We change daily, all of us. I love to say including the Pope is supposed to change on a daily basis because we all are flawed. All of us. The messenger and those that are receiving the message. And so the basic dictionary gives us the definition of joy. It tells us this is what our body feels, it's what our emotion feels. But John Piper, he's the founder and teacher of DesiringGod.org. He describes Christian joy as a good feeling, yeah, feeling, y'all, in the soul, produced by the Holy Spirit. That's good. As he, the Holy Spirit, causes us to see the beauty of Christ. He didn't just say Jesus, he said Christ, because we're talking about the passion, the beauty of the suffering, the beauty of Christ in the word and in the world. Long definition. Christian joy. Let me give you some references of joy, so you don't think the Apostle Paul was the only one talking about Christian joy. James 1-2 says, my brethren, and when they were praying, they read some of these. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy when you're going through your body afflictions. Count it all joy when you get fired. Count it all joy when you can't find a job. Count it all joy when it seems like you don't have enough money. Count it all joy when you're not speaking to family. Count it all joy when friends seem to be treating you wrong. Count it all joy when your Facebook status, you know, it looks like you want to put up a whole bunch of stuff and you don't know what to put up and you're in your emotions, your fingers are typing faster than you can think. Count it all joy. And then erase that status because it shouldn't go up. Amen. <laughs> if there's a tone in the text, there's a tone in the status. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you want to take those statuses back, but not everybody has seen it. Mm -hmm. It can be like, I can erase it, but they already saved it. Mm -hmm. It's already in their spirit. Count it all joy. Psalm 16 and 11. So David, James tells us count it all joy. And David says, thou shalt show me the paths of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. That's that Christian joy, y'all. We're going to get to that. And at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Fullness of joy, which lets us know that joy is not just a seed. Joy is not just a seed. You don't give yourself joy. I know people say, think, you know, they say you think yourself happy, but you can't think yourself joy. Joy comes from Jesus. I'm going to explain that later. Joy comes from the Holy Spirit. The Bible declares that. And the Holy Spirit gets fullness of joy. That's like a full baby already being there, not one that's growing. So if you have fullness of joy in you when you already uh, accept Christ, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then why do you feel so bad so many times Amen. during the day? You're getting to it. Just talking to you. If you already have fullness of joy inside of you once you accept Christ, once you fill with the Holy Spirit, if you have fullness of joy because of your relationship with God, then why do you feel bad? Why can your feelings get hurt? What's the problem? And this morning I'm going to talk to you about accessing your joy. Yes. Your fullness of joy that's already there. We're going to talk about accessing your joy. Because it's there. You won't have to find it. It's already inside of you if you accept it. John 15 and 11. John said, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you. That your joy might be full. He said, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy. Isn't that something? may remain in you. You can actually access joy and put it in somebody else. Y'all not. The Holy Spirit gives it to you. 
But because of your relationship, you can give joy to somebody else. Just like you, misery loves company, joy loves company. He says that my joy might remain in you. If it's full, it's a joy, you got enough to go around. And that your joy might be full. And here's the key. For joy to be full, it got to be ignited with covenant. Got to be two or three. Because when two or three are gathered there, he, Jesus, is in the mix. The Holy Spirit is he, not it. And so when Jesus is in the midst, he makes the difference. He, he, in acts, he gives you access to fullness of joy. You know that joy that God gave that the world didn't get? The world can't take that fullness of joy. Now that baby came out because they were full and ready. Fullness of turn. Eyes, nose, breathing, seeing. Sometimes smiling. They say the baby not really smiling, but listen, we take it as a smile. Amen. If they can clap in your stomach, they can smile when they out. Fullness of joy. And so you got to, I'm preaching already, you got to get with people who you see have access, joy. When you feeling down, don't call somebody else who's already down. Call somebody else who you know has access to joy. My God, if you hungry or you need money, you don't usually call somebody who broke. You call somebody who got a full account. So why, when you get down, you call somebody who can't help you? They just as broke in the spirit as you. Ah, uh, my God, I'm trying to calm down so I can breathe. I'm getting excited. Praise God. Romans 14 and 17. The good servant of God, Paul, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Minister Milsa touched on this, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And it's not those things that we can touch. Isaiah said in 61 and 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, Tanya, to give unto them beauty for ashes. Watch this, y'all. I, I, my mind was blown. The oil of joy for mourning. Did you know that joy comes in the form of oil? If you get an anointing, you get some joy. Oh, you wondering why there's a need to be anointed. There's a need for you to have some joy. Y'all, it all ties together. It's not somebody, it's connected. It's connected. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You always heavy. You got to look at what you're wearing. <laughs> yeah, I'm preaching. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Because y'all know we glorify ourselves so much. We talk about everything we going through and everything we got. We show it off. But when do we glorify God so that we can access full joy? Acts 17 and 28 says, For in him, I love this, y'all, we live and move and have our being. So, so just because you're a human being don't mean you're supposed to be disconnected from God or not believe that there is a God. Because in him, in Christ Jesus, we live, we move, and we have our being. It's a continuum, being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring, we belong to Christ. Okay. So then, how do we get joy for our sorrow? Ask somebody how, how? How, how do we count it all joy? Ask my how. I'm talking about counting some stuff all joy. You wouldn't know who was fighting. Counted all joy. Your woman on there didn't leave you. Counted all joy. Your kids might not be acting out right now. You might have money in your pocket. Your rent might be paid. Your mortgage might not be due. You're telling people to count it all joy. How do we do that? Because this, this stuff sounds good, but we need some practical, tangible Amen. advice to walk away with from the word. Because preaching and humming and Making a record out of it sound real good, and I feel like I got joy, but when I leave, I found out it was happiness, because I don't know what happened, because I heard the word, but now I'm feeling bad. What is that about? How do we get 
access to this fullness of joy? Practically, seriously, how do we lay hold of it? First thing you need to understand is you don't have to find joy. You just access it. Joy is given to you by God through the Holy Spirit. Y'all yeah, believe me. You don't have to find it. You got to understand that complete joy is in Christ Jesus, in him, in Jesus. It's given through God. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 tells us the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy. Yes. If it is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, it means the Holy Spirit has to be in you for you to receive it. Amen. Which means joy comes from Jesus. It comes from God. It comes from part of the Trinity. Yes. And if joy comes from Jesus, without him, then you have no joy. You have some happiness because something happened, but you don't have joy. Happiness gives you that same feeling in your flesh. Joy gives you that feeling in your soul. You can't connect your soul without the Holy Ghost and without Jesus Christ. God is the author of your soul. He breathed breath and spirit into you. He created your whole being. He's the one that gave the soul. He's the one that connects to it. He's the one that gives the soul joy. Your flesh can't connect to your soul without an intermediate, an intercessor, the Holy Spirit, Christ Jesus, God. And so you need to understand that you're trying to create joy. But all you got to do is get with Jesus. All you got to do is get in him. In him we have inheritance. In him we obtain redemption through his blood. In him, we get forgiveness of sins. In him, we are blessed with spiritual blessings. The deepest description of the essential characteristic of a Christian life is in Jesus. The deepest description of the essential characteristics of a Christian life is in Jesus Christ. I know I'm not hocking, but I'm preaching. Yes, you are. Y'all gonna get some help on your job, in your home, in this Ministry, you know you could be in a ministry and don't have joy. Amen. You could be in a marriage and have no joy. Amen. You could have children and have no. You could have money trunk and have no joy. So the servant of Christ, Paul, champions this truth that in Jesus there is fullness of joy. And when he's going through some of his darkest times and writing letters from jail cells and writing letters knowing that he's about to be martyred or killed, he's encouraging someone else to rejoice. Why read? Because God already gave it to you. I'm talking to the brethren, not to the world. Rejoice. Get your joy back again. You were given a gift of salvation, but when you receive the Holy Spirit inside of you, he gave you another gift of joy. You have left it in your house sitting unwrapped. You didn't like the way it was wrapped. It came in a brown paper bag, so you didn't think it was worthy to be unwrapped, not realizing that if you went inside the brown paper bag, God gave you something that would help you through the toughest times of your life. Trying to explain to you how to access your joy. Our overseer, it is in his heart for us to understand what fullness of joy is. It is my assignment to encourage you to go look for the brown paper bag with your joy inside and find it and lay hands on it. Sit down. Read your. Paul could almost hear them talking back. But I this, I that. They want to stone me. They want to kill me. We ain't got no food. We ain't got nowhere to live. So he gives it again as a commandment. And again I say rejoice. I'm not going to change what I'm telling you. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. And so you have to begin to ask yourself some questions and search for the answers to them. 
First question, how do I access fullness or complete joy that God has placed in me? Second question, how can I become comfortable with Christian joy? Some of you once accessed joy, maybe mistakenly cleaning out this house. You came across the bag and opened it up and accessed it, but put it to the side because you weren't comfortable with it. It didn't look like you thought it should look. It didn't taste like you thought it should taste. It didn't seem like it was for this time. Like good old castor oil. <laughs> Thick. Don't want to fall down. It's all right. I'll show you how to access it. Fullness of joy. You once saw it. You unpacked it. But you didn't want to be bothered with it because you weren't comfortable with it. It's like some woman in Christendom, when you were in the world, you looked for a certain type of man. And then when you get in God and these guys coming to you talking about the words so much, you're like, okay, can you be real with me? He is being real. Right. I, I, I need to, I, I, I just can't all that Bible stuff, but I, I need somebody who's going to be real with me. Well, what's being real, real. if not the truth? Yeah, right. <laughs> I need a ghetto. I told you ain't clean out your house yet. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know fullness of joy. <laughs> I just want him to take me out. Then he take you out. I just want him to take me in, spend time with me. No, you want him to be somebody else. Oh, he want to talk about a God in the future. Oh, you better be glad. All he want to talk about is God in the future. He boring. You, you, you need to break the cycle. I better get with some of these boring guys. They ain't boring. Your taste hasn't changed. Your palate has not been elevated. That's good. Uh-huh. I was watching these wedding shows. They do four weddings and they got the thing with them. The, the, the four friends. Now they compete for the trip. Uh, one lady was spending one hundred fifty thousand dollars on wedding. I'm like, pay for your own trip. Uh, right. Yeah. But okay. And they had one group. They went in that range of paying one hundred fifty thousand. I don't think the wedding was like five thousand dollars or something like that. It's fine. But they went to another front wedding, and then they had chicken with goat cheese. And they're sitting there, it's like, we're not used to this fancy food. We used to hamburgers and hot sauce. It's so what the grass house. And at their wedding, they did. They had beans from a can. At their wedding, that's what they had. That's what they could afford. That's what they was used to. But what I am saying is, they were, they were walking together because they agreed. But your palate hasn't changed. They didn't like chicken. They said chicken was fancy. With goat cheese. It was fancy food. Because to them, it was. Their palate wasn't elevated. Sometimes, when you're a child, certain things you don't like. When I was a child, I couldn't stand tomatoes. I got older, I loved tomatoes. Something, I hated lasagna when I was a child. It was too much going on. As I got older, the taste, the taste just changed. I used to like that thin steak from the supermarket. I did. And then I got older and went to like Peter Lugas or Wolfgang's. Amen. And I tasted steak that you could cut with a spoon. And I said, oh, the steak wasn't supposed to be tall? <laughs> it's different. Not laughing at me. You change, your palate change. And then I just, palate changed so much, I just didn't want steak no more. But that's me. <laughs> that's me. And so, you got to be comfortable with Christian joy. And Paul had to be comfortable with his Christian joy to say rejoice in the Lord all the way. And again, I say rejoice. Acts 19 and 2 said, He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost 
since ye believed. And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. Now listen, that is not your excuse. You heard that there is a Holy Ghost. In other words, what am I saying? You cannot have joy if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Let me get to this. And you cannot have joy if you, after you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you have not received his Holy Spirit. Then say, speak in tongues, there were many signs of receiving the Holy Spirit, like loving people the right way, not gossiping all the time. Like understanding that you too are unrighteous and you can forgive somebody for hurting your feelings. Yes. Like knowing that we all say but by grace. Yes. That ain't none of us perfect. Like understanding I'm not looking at Minister Milsa because she stepped on somebody's toe and saying she inconsiderate when I just roll my eyes at somebody. Yes. Sister Anna was coming in. Talk about Anna. Huh, Jordan was running a little late. And she came in like a spoolie. It was praying. I did like this to her. Left back there for a minute. I was considering whether I should let her serve being late. Because prayer started at 10. And, then I, and I didn't want her coming up while prayer was going on. Drawing focus in the front row. So wait. I did rush straight forward. I didn't put no icing on it. A couple of y'all saw, I know y'all did. She took her seat back there. Her heart probably gave, speeded up a little bit. I'm, I'm talking about you, but it's okay. I've been there. And I sat and I prayed and asked God, should I let her serve? He said, yes, because if you don't, you may break her today. So I told Anna to come back up after prayer was done and she came to the front. And then I had to go in the back, did some stuff and said, pray for me. And uh, she prayed for me. She laid hands. I put, I put her hand in my back. She prayed for me like nobody business. The ladies, the woman of God who served me directly, like Kim, Jordan, Anna, and Dejanae, they have to be able to take my straightforward professional supervisory roughness. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if they can't take that courtesy from me, they can't lay hands and pray for me. Now, everybody don't get to lay hands and pray for me. What am I saying? I respect them professionally when they get their little attitudes and stuff. They, they got to know I know them. You got to know that they don't have attitudes right now. I love them and forgive them and keep going. They don't even realize I realize they got an attitude because they don't. Y'all ever see? I never tell you. They got never, 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 right? Uh huh. Mm -hmm, Jordan. And they get attitudes and I keep it moving and I love them anyway. And they said, I, I respect them as women of God and the children. And they've grown in God. And, and I move on and say, look, and I say, Joe, you can't say hi today, Joy. Okay. And I let them, and they have to be able to take the same courtesy from me in a supervisory level. Some of y'all don't have fullness of joy because you don't have thick skin. Everything interrupts your joy. It used to happen to me. Little things can interrupt your joy. And you keep thinking you got joy in Jesus, Christian joy, fullness of joy, and it keeps slipping away from you. No, when you opened up the bag, you picked up a crumb wow. and didn't eat the whole cake. I'm dieting. Not from the word. Don't diet from your grace. Don't diet from your fullness of joy. If God gives you a birthday cake, eat some of it. The whole thing. Stop thinking so cute. When you go into somebody's house, I don't eat nothing. I got people house, though some people know me, so they'll offer me something like that. But if they offer something, I'll, yeah, I'll try to find something and say thank you to be hospitable. If God is offering you something, it's because you need it. Y'all missing me. Y'all so offended by me that y'all can't be blessed through me or by me. Amen. Amen. Yeah, a song. If you don't know me by now, you know. Yeah. If you don't know me by now, it's okay. That's just an excuse. No, it's not. Some uh -uh. people I'm smiling with all the time, there's no post relationship. Some people who's under me or on my level, 
Those people who I'm saying that to, who do stuff in church, like they just getting away with murder. I don't care what's going on with them. I let them go a long time ago. I handed them over. They got nothing to do with them. Come as late as you want. You'll see when you call me to the hospital. You calling me while I'm in Jamaica next year. Because you were in the hospital. And Kim is like, oh, I have her phone. She, what was the message? Right. Now I need to speak to her. Right. And she gonna know who not to give me no phone with while I'm in Jamaica. Right. Sister Wong. She gonna know who not to give me the phones. I'm not talking about you. I'm just saying. <laughs> while we in Jamaica. And they talking about, they, 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 I pass. we your pastor? Y'all should really take it. Y'all should really take it. Sit down for a minute. So this is how I'm going to conclude this message. Some, some of y'all jumping up and down like, what? <laughs> <laughs> y'all already accessing y'all joy. Y'all got the keys and y'all like, yes, is she serious? <laughs> I'm going to show you something about you probably never really seen before this way. Because I, I had it. Not this way. I'm going to show you an example of how to access joy, how God gives you joy. A real practical example. Don't stand up, but turn to Nehemiah 8 chapter. I'm in the New Living Translation. You can turn to your King James Version, but it's going to read a little different, but it means the same thing. You'll see it. Nehemiah 8 chapter. I'm starting at the first verse. I'm going to take you through this so you can see in the Old Testament example of God giving fullness of joy even before Jesus physically came on the scene. This is awesome. I'm going to show you how to get fullness of joy, access to it, and keep your access. You're going to leave here understanding and knowing that what we do is not haphazard. What we do is not our own stuff. This stuff is biblical and it's scriptural. So now you can take somebody to it and say, y'all be having church and y'all do this and y'all do that. And, what? and this don't make no sense. That ain't what the Bible's about. I'm about to show you Exactly what we do is in the Bible. Amen. And how you've been missing access to your fullness of joy because you've been taking for granted that you've been doing a program. Jesus. Nehemiah 8 chapter. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I'm going to be stopping. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. All the people assembled with a unified purpose Right there. Right. We came together with the same God. Yeah. That's what they just said, right? Yeah. That's what we do, right? Yeah. On Sunday mornings? Yeah. Wednesday Zooms? All the people assembled with a unified purpose at the square. This room got one, two, three, four walls, you can see. Square. Y'all believe me, watch this. Just inside the water gate, they asked Ezra, the scribe, the scribe, this is the preacher, the writer, to bring out the book of the law of Moses. This was their Bible, their word of God. Preacher, pastor, bring out the book that we look to for direction which the Lord had given for Israel to obey, which the Lord had given for the church to obey. In other words, all the people got together with one purpose inside Restoration Center Hall, 599 Hageman Avenue, and they asked Overseer Jermaine McInnes to bring out the Bible which the Lord had given for Restoration to obey. Amen. Don't believe me? Yeah, because we're not making this stuff up, missionary. We don't stray from the Bible. I don't know what others are. I'm telling you what we do here. I want to show y'all how we can really access and keep some joy. Because it don't make more sense for us to always be miserable and be sad. Yeah. Why go to heaven and miserable? Yeah. So true. I mean, a road get rocky, but by God, we can get some iced tea in the car? Yeah. Can we have some air conditioning? Read up on your free arm. Prepare. Amen. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fix them windows so they roll down at least, kid. <laughs> it's okay to smile in the house of God. That's how we grow together. Verse 2 said, So on October 8th, whatever your King James Version said, this is the time. It's October 8th. Ezra, 
The priest brought the book of the Lord before the assembly. So the pastor brings the Bible out and he this is what he does. Which included the men and women and all the children, all the children, all the children, all the children old enough to understand. How about that? If they're old enough to understand, tell them to come to church, bring them. Get them up in here. Something for them. They need some fullness of joy too. These teachers is about to go in because they have crazy because the kids are driving them crazy. And you talking about it ain't your kid. Let's help these kids connect to these teachers. And if the teacher's really ungodly, then you step in. But if you would go to some of the meetings, you would know what the spirit that teacher got. You can't be home and not attend the meetings and talking about these teachers. I'm still preaching. Yeah. To my fullness of joy. You going up to the school and he's going to be treating my child like this. And you a Christian? Yeah. With fullness of joy? And then you cursing teachers out? The teacher been having a hard time with your kid for five months. Oh my God. And then the teacher take away their little phone they weren't supposed to have. And now you up there. They don't pay the bill. No, and you don't pay their salary. Amen. They trying to teach your child and they got to be disciplining your child. That's your job. Why don't we go to school, Jermaine Jr.? Sure. Then you go tomorrow. No, but nothing else is. You go to learn. Right. You ask Deja Nay, she's an adult. She's an adult. Why are you in school? Ain't no to get no job. You in school to learn. So better yourself. You owe that teacher respect. Now, you know, they got to earn. No, they don't. You got to earn respect. Don't open your mouth. If they hurt your feelings, suck it up, let the tear roll, and you going to let your parent know what happened and let them decipher what goes on. But don't disrespect nobody. And if you behave wisely, with your fullness of joy, children, God will intervene without your parent being there. And teachers won't be doing all the kind of stuff that they do. And if they're crazy enough to lay hands on you, that'll be taken care of. Oh, yeah. They might be out the next week because God lay sickness on them. You better behave wisely. Yeah. God got y'all covered too. Yeah. You kidding me? That's why you're supposed to know what's going on. I send my name, my number, overseeing number, his father number. I'll be like, I'm dad to make in this. I'm Mrs. Make in. Kawana make in. Jermaine's mother, my number is. His dad's number is. If you need to reach us at any time, if there are any situations. Acting like your kid. Your kid is growing. You just want to hear perfect report. Okay, how well Junior doing? They be he's doing this, he's doing that. My question is, what does he need assistance in? Amen. How can we assist you? Because I'm not here. I don't forget the praises, because we don't want him and you praying. No, your child, you're growing, you're doing wonderful, keep doing it. That's your reasonable service. What can we help him with? That's when we got to stop organization. All right, I know you're telling the truth. He was late two times coming to class because he was at his locker unorganized, right? Uh-huh, he's in the house. His book bag is a mess. We about to get this straight. Then he got a strike, right? You find out what they need help in. Stop giving teachers a hard time. I'm moving on. I don't know why I had to go there, but somebody was about to give a teacher a hard time. The teachers in here need to be saying amen. Good God, oh God. So which included the men and women and all the children old enough to understand. He faced the square just inside the water gate from early morning church until noon, afternoon, and read aloud to everyone who could understand. All the people listened closely. They weren't going to the bathroom. They weren't drinking water. They weren't in the basement. They weren't outside the square walls. They all listened closely to the book of the Lord, to the Bible. All restoration was paying attention like you are now. Love verse 4. Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform. Underneath all this carpet is wood. This is a high wooden platform for those of you who think we're not doing stuff biblical. They just want to sit high and look low. Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. In other words, Overseer Jermaine Dickens, the servant of God, stood on a pulpit Amen. that had been made for the occasion. His friend, Pastor David Stewart, the man of God, came and helped put it together for the occasion. <laughs> to his right stood, and I'm about to give you 
you all these names is just the means that some of the men of God stood on this side, some of the men of God stood on this side. Matiah, Shema, Ananiah, Uriah, Hikiah, Messiah. To his left stood Padiah, Mishael, Makah, Hashum, Hashpadana, Zechariah, and Mishalam. Ezra stood on the platform in full view of the people. It needs to be higher because I need to see all of you. I am not God. I just need a view where I can see who I am speaking to. When they saw him open the book, the book of Moses, the Bible for us, they all rose to their feet. Wow, you mean if I stand for the word of God, that's in the Bible? He will stand for me? You mean when it was time to read the scripture, everyone didn't say wheelchair people sat. It just said they all stood. It didn't say if I was tired and sick and had a headache, I sat. Now we understand things come up and we make allowances. I get sick too. But here it says when they saw him open the book, the usher didn't come. It didn't say the rest. It didn't say the R O or R A. Can you say, can you please stand for the reading of God's word? They had to do that. Because when the people who were paying attention saw the book come out and they opened up, they immediately stood to attention to the word of God. What is God about to say to us? We got to stand up. We got to get direction. I'm telling you this stuff is biblical. I'm showing you how to access fullness of joy. It's practical. Amen. Children of Israel do all kinds of stuff, even today, and they still got God's favor. Yeah. Yeah. Ow! Because they pay attention when God speaks. Yes. Uh -huh. We got all this grace, and we still don't get it. So they all rose to their feet. Verse 6, then Ezra praised the Lord. Oh, you mean to tell me pastors to praise the Lord? Ezra praised the Lord. Ha! Yeah, they got a little short quote. He praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people chanted, amen, amen. You mean it's biblical that my response to the word is yay and amen? Yeah, yeah, because y'all might think we make this stuff up. As they lifted their hands, wow, not sat there like this. Walk in what we want, mad because we can't do stuff. Now, y'all gonna be mad a lot. You come in late, you're not on your pulse. We say, please don't serve. We can do it inconspicuously. You're still gonna be mad because you're gonna feel like everybody see you because they know you serve. You did that. In college, it's what good to go to college. We ain't no different. It's just peace, baby. It is not. It teaches you discipline, if nothing else. Because if that professor say, I'm closing my door, I paid for my class, so what? You come late, my door's closed, don't open it. Lock my door. They do that. They lock doors, they serve. And they should law school with judges who are her professors. They told kids, you gonna take them to court? <laughs> this is true. Oh! What you gonna do? You gonna come, what, you gonna come to court, you gonna see me. Oh, the judge that she worked for is not her professor. Lord. <laughs> oh, I'm staying close today. She's trying to get prosecuted. She's going to have some good friends. Amen. Okay, y'all think what y'all want then. Yeah, it's good who you know. Y'all yeah, better be nice today. She's going to be nice to y'all. She, she raised right. She's going to be right. She's going to act right. And we're going to call her to the cop and let her know, no, you being me. Uh-huh. Okay. Watch this. As they lifted their hands, then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. What? Oh! When the word came out, they worshiped God? Good God. Well, he didn't even start reading yet. Woo! Glory! They just worshiping God because he was worshiping God. How about that? and fullness of joy. You wondering why you leave not the same way? You coming up in here staring like somebody owe you something. Like you got luggage and you waiting. Amuse me. Because there's a lot of churches I could be in. But it's not a lot of churches you're supposed to be in. So you go you go there, they're not going to 
understand your language. Right. You speak in English, they speak in Arabic. You got to go where God guides your feet, whether you want to be there or not. Only in church do we decide what we, kids don't go to school talking about, I want to be in this class. I like, I'm like, i going to the next class. Really? In college, you don't even get to, you, you get to, you get to choose the class, and if you don't like, and then they change the professor. You can't just be changing professors. You could drop it, but we don't have another available. That class is closed. There are consequences. We treat God so haphazard. We act like we doing me and oversee a favor by coming, or each other a favor. We, it's like so haphazard. And then we get God is blessing me. He's not blessing you. You're going to find out because the blessings of the Lord make a rich and add no sorrow. You're about to cry over what you think is a blessing. Go old Brad Boo, you about to cry. Yeah. Dej got home. I called her last night. She, you getting ready for church? Yeah. She tried me and said, she said, I was thinking about not going. I said, go to church. <laughs> Yeah, she's an adult. Go to church. I am. Uh, I said, I know you are. I said, you know why? I said, this is the first time in a long time that you came here and went back with no problems on the airline. Right. This is the first time God slowed a time so we could be together. I was sick, but I didn't have to go to the hospital. Right. You made it back safe. Everything is in its place. God has blessed you. Got home and your paycheck was there. Go to church. I am. I just want to make sure I had time for school. No, you make sure you got time for God, and God will make sure you have time for school. Don't get away from us and forget God. We ain't God. God is God. We taught you better than that. Go to church. Give your time to Him, but give your offering to that man of God. The pastor over there that is a shepherd over her while she's there, he's sick. We're praying for him. He's doing watch care. Give your love offering to that man of God. When he's not there, make sure you're in the building. Amen. You crazy. Church there a couple of hours. Go to church. This morning she called me. Hey, Debbie. I just called to say good morning. Okay. I'm getting ready for church, Ma. Okay. Because <laughs> I don't know what a lot of people do, but I'm your mama. And as long as I'm alive, I'm going to preach Christ to you. Yes. We're going to put God first. Yes. Above everything. And yeah, my family comes before ministry, but God comes before it all. Yes. Yes. Even myself. Yes. So what you tired? I'm tired too. Yes. Go to church. We are the church, yeah, but you got to be connected. Yes. You in the house by yourself. Yes. Go to church. You praying for a good husband? Go to church. I told him, you want a good career? Go to church. So what you in law school? God could cut some stuff, and you wouldn't even be able to go back. God could just twit, twit, twit with his eye to breathe, move, and stuff would be different. Go to church. You care nothing about how you feeling. Right. Tell somebody, go to church. Go to church. Almost finished, y'all. I promise you. Damn, I'm almost finished. The Levites. Oh, the Levites was in the house. We can't even get this Levite stuff together no more. We got, oh, Lord. Really, the Levites are those who serve the house. So, like, the ushers and stuff, they would be considered Levites. Them they clean the house. The Levites, the workers, the servant leaders, Yeshua, Mana, Sherebiah, Hanin, Akab, Shabbatia, Hadiah, Masiah, Kalita, Azariah, Azabad, Anna, Paliah, then instructed the people in the Lord while everyone remained in their places. We want fullness of joy. We want to access it. We're not in our place. And y'all getting mad at me because I keep saying something. Like, if you're the musician, be the music, right? If, if, if you're the usher, be the usher. If you're the preacher, be the preacher. Like, let's be in our place. Yeah. Now I'm just saying, if you're security, security. I mean, let's just do it. If you're the mother's, let's be in our place. And sometimes we ain't even trying to be in nobody else's place. We just don't want nobody telling us what to do. A bunch of mushkies. Y'all know what that means, but I do. It's 
It's ridiculous. You are a child if you don't want anybody to tell you what to do. Because as long as you live, somebody's going to be over you instructing you to do something. When you retire from your job, it might be one of the spouses. Y'all answering to each other. When you get old enough, your kids start trying to tell you what to do again. Y'all know what y'all can. Y'all parents always say amen. You know what I'm talking about. There's always somebody. The traffic director, the cops, the police, the officer. Somebody going to tell you what to do. The judge, the FBI, the CIA. There's always somebody higher than you. Only children don't like to be told what to do and get instructed. Intelligent, mature people want to know instructions and directions. They want to know. They ain't just walking in on willy-nilly when they get ready. Okay. Y'all believe me. They read from the book of the Lord. They read the gospel, y'all. That was their good news. Of God and clearly explained the meaning of what was being read. Our, I'm going to say it, ethnic church. We love a good sermon with a hum. We don't want nobody to slow down and talk to us. People are supposed to clearly know what you're talking about. And, and you know what? As congregants, we're just shouting over anything. Just because they gave us a title from a TV show. That means most of their studying was done watching Empire and Scandal. And whatever the newest TV show, basketball and Hollywood and whatever it is, that's what they do with all their criminal minds and see. And some, okay, a nice TV show every now and again, but it's all if all you ever quote to me. Every title? I said, okay, you can see God in everything, but don't let everything twist the word. Everything we have in church. We empire. We kings and queens. I thought we wasn't supposed to be the priest, the, the, the king, and the prophet at the same time. I thought only Jesus was that. Right. Now we prophet, king, and priest? Oh, we replaced Jesus? They read from the book of the Lord of God clearly. They made it plain. Explained the meaning of what was being read. Helping the people understand each passage. Help it. That means they actually read the word of God. Right. You know how we real quick to get through it? Yep. Like, let me get, oh, God. And I used to do this. Because this is what, like, you're taught, and you're like, and all the people, huh, assemble with a unified purpose. Huh, have to square just inside the water gate. That might come later, but in the beginning, you came out running. You were excited and like, okay, so once in a while, but every time you get up, you ha huh, and ha huh, and you hum in the word and you sing in it. And they did that to music too. But and then when you finish, like, I don't know how to change my situation. I don't like I don't know how to go back to that job that I want to quit and really live so that I can stay there and be strengthened. I don't know. Like you told me to rejoice in the Lord, but you didn't really tell me what to do. Like right now, I'm telling you, in order to rejoice in God, when we get these times together, you got to really attentive, be attentive to the word and accept it and see how it applies to your life. And then you begin to change according to that. I'm giving you a practical way. A practi I'm saying that you can physically hear what I am saying and I'm going to make it clear so you can walk away with it. So now you have better joy. Fullness of joy. You're accessing your joy and you can be joyful one another. So if somebody is just as down as you, you don't go to them for help. I'm giving you practical advice. So if somebody asks you what was the word of God, oh, oh let me just, oh, she was so good. Oh, oh my God, and when she's, oh, and that, what was the word? Don't y'all get tired of that? Yes. Oh, the word was good. How did it help you? Are you prepared for somebody to say, how did the word help you? Right. Girl, you need to come, because this word will help you. How did it help you? And then you'll think, hi, help me. I tried to get something to you, and you talking about how it helped me? Yes. You're a living epistle. I want to know how, because if it helped you, I know it'll help me. Right. Now be offended. If it helped your attitude, it's going to help mine. Now be offended. She talking about I got a bad attitude. That's not what she said or he said. They said if it helped yours, it'll help mine. And now you mad because you didn't really get the word. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we all stuck up in Christ thinking we got it going on. 
walking around with milk dripping from our ears, sucking the bottle and the milk going back. Don't have no utensils to eat good meat. But it says helping the people to understand. It helps you to understand, which means you read your word on your own too. Yep. Then Nehemiah the governor. Now, they had it so organized that governors showed up in their meetings. Where politicians at? Right. Somebody else got to be here beside us. We need some folks in the world with jobs to hear the word. Everybody got to hear the word. Yes. Tired of it just being us. Yes. We can't help each other if it's just us. Mm -hmm. We need to be a connective network. There's no network with just you. Can't be just you. Girl, I get along with her because we, we both in after school, you know, so that's why I can But everybody can't be in after school. Lord, no. We need officers and firemen and police. We need a community. Or we're missing something. Mm -hmm. yeah, this doesn't make sense to you? Amen. Then Nehemiah the governor, as were the priests. Okay, so they got the governor, they got the pastor, and the scribe, and the Levites. They got the members, the workers, the servants, who were interpreting for the people. Didn't lay members. So all of them were interpreting the word for the people. Everybody don't get to turn. Every lay member, somebody just come in, they want to be a preacher. They just got saved yesterday. I, I, since, I, since I was a baby, they said I was going to be a preacher, but you don't know nothing yet. Right. It's like you want to be a doctor, but you ain't been to medical school. Yeah. Right. It's like it takes like 12 years to become a med to get over your residency. Yes. Aren't you glad the physician that looked at you was in there for at least 12 years? Right. Don't give me the fast drop off. God Almighty, we want everything so quick. And we don't respect anybody who's been through it already. They ain't no better than me, but they know more than you because they actually walk through it. It's okay. We didn't say you were dumb. You just don't know about that. I'm ignorant in some stuff. You ignorant. We learn from each other. I don't know how to do plumbing. Basic, taking off the, the little whatever it's called, and taking the hair out. Okay. Go pick your child. What we, what we doing? Tell my husband, call your father. Now I can say that less. You need to pay attention to some stuff. But if you don't know, you ask somebody who not. Amen. I don't know everything. Now, ministry, I know. Yes. And what I don't know, I pay attention to and go get. So, yeah, I'm always telling you about ministry stuff and where it should be in that. Because I know I suffered. I, I've been sitting. I've been watching. I've been trained. I've been talked about. I've been put in place. I, I know ministry. So y'all tired of me telling y'all about it, but I know ministry. Yes. No plumbing and electrical and no. I know something's sparking. Right. I don't know why I ain't touching it. Usually that make it and I ain't touching it. I just know we need light so I can read. So for the people who had all been weeping, y'all gotta listen to this. Let me go back. They interpreted the word for said to them, don't mourn or weep on such a day as this. Y'all got to listen to this. Because we hear the word and we start crying out and we're always on the altar crying out. But I need you to hear me. Don't be offended. You got to listen because we're talking about access and fullness of joy. This is what you came for. Amen. Don't mourn or weep on such a day as this. For today is a sacred day before the Lord your God. Don't go before God any kind of way. Sometimes you go before God because you need that kind of help. But other times you got to access joy and you can't come crying. For the people had all been weeping as they listened to the words of the Lord. And sometimes you're going through so much you're crying. But here's the problem. If you always crying in church and because you're going through, that means you're, you're only focused on what you're going through and not what God wants you to be crying and what he wants you to do. Good. That's an immature, selfish way of being a Christian. You can't get fullness of joy. When you first, when you a babe in Christ and you first come, you always cry, and Lord help me, and I don't know how to come out, and I keep falling, and I keep, that's a babe. But, but as you grow and mature, you gotta learn how to suck it up like a good soldier and get some fullness of joy, cause you gotta be on your pulse. You can't be looking sad and crying and weeping. I just got to get mine today. You out of order. Today you are. For the people have all been weeping as they listen to the words of the Lord. 
And Nehemiah continued. Now he go to governor. Hear this? Go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks. Come on with that cucumber lemonade. Yes. God Almighty. The jerk chicken. Mm -hmm. Peas and rice and milk sir. Ooh, stuff plant day. Feast of rich food. I still mm, tell Mother Hunter I said it. <laughs> and sweet drink. And share gifts. Watch it. Oh, food. Food could be a gift. Sure can. With people who have nothing prepared. Like, come on now. When, now, when we start eating downstairs again, and if we didn't cook, and you got food, and you see somebody not eating, don't assume they fasting. Right. Share. Right. Share what you have. Make sure we okay. I know. Come on, like, if we can't, like, if we're stingy with each other, what, what are we talking about? Right. What? That ain't the love of Christ. Right. You eating your chicken wings, and you see people over there with their kid eating chips. I suppose they already ate. Stop. And I want you to just look, like, listen, I don't know, I got this chicken, we're going to share this today. Girl, you eat chicken, baby? It's not going, you want, you know they want some. We got to stop doing this to each other. And you don't have to know all their business because you shared the food. Right. And the whole church ain't got to know you gave no one your chicken wing. Because you know you don't gave a chicken wing over here. I'm still preaching. I'm helping somebody with fullness of joy. And then you don't came over here to Anisha and you sitting down with her, girl, yeah. Because you know, girl, mm, I had to give, you know, I, I just, I wanted to share. And you know, we got to help each other. So I gave her a couple of chicken wings for her and my daughter. Yay. Oh, you talking about people, chick. Bye, Felicia. You ain't helping nobody. Keep your chicken. I'd rather be hungry. We gotta really help each other. Now you be mad if she took that chicken you sat in front of her since you talking about her and she go tell somebody, it's hair all over this chicken. Let's not do this to each other. Y'all hear me? Listen, we don't want to be phony. This is why we're not happy in the kingdom. All this nonsense and this, I don't want fake relationships. That's why people don't know how to take me. If I hurt you, I'll apologize. I don't even wait for you to say, if I know I hurt you, I'll apologize. I will. Sometimes my delivery is hard. Like I'm giving you paper plates, because that's what I got. I ain't got China prepared. You got to eat now. Amen. Listen. But I'd rather keep having to apologize. I'd rather be a woman that regards heart. And keep saying sorry and apologize to you and be sincere with you than be fake and phony and smile in your face and talk about you behind your back. All the while I want to take your place. Back I don't want to be one of them and I'm not going to be. Amen. I'm smiling. But I'm talking, if I'm talking about my husband and you, you know I'm going to talk about you. No. I'm only telling you what I know I can say myself to the person and have said. Now, if you're acting like a devil and everybody see it, I, like, you out of order. They out of order. Y'all don't be acting like that. I will do that. As the mother shepherd of this house, I earn some stripes. As young as I am, you don't want this anointing. You want yours. I'm grace for this. Mm -hmm. We get there. I'm talking about fullness of joy, y'all. We better stop being funny with one another. Amen. Really helping each other. Amen. I don't know why I'm on this. But if you're going to give somebody something, just give it to them. Right. Oh, and Nehemiah continued going and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks. Share your gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Watch this. Don't be dejected and sad. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. You said you want to be strong, but every time I see you, you complaining. I only got a box of cereal and two cans of beans and some rice in the house. Girl, that sounds like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. 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 